Yeah, we're going to start. Uh, I'm going to build my version of what they call, I guess companies call it the jaw boss. It's for holding small pieces of wood. Uh, when we do our spring uh, camp road regrading and stuff, there's always birch trees that are bent over. They're just real small. It's kind of a pain in the butt to try to cut them off the ground and they will, the chainsaw grabs them. If you're going to get hurt, it's normally on a small piece of wood. So I want to make, I had this hanging around, so I'm going to make it so it goes in the receiver hitch or the truck or a tractor, whatever's there, and we can clamp that in. You know, cut these small birches down that are probably 20 foot tall trees, but only three to four inches round. I want to be able to put them in here, clamp it, and cut them without it bouncing around. So I, I really think them, uh, the jaw boss is a good one. I don't know how much they cost, but I've got all kinds of like cutoffs and stuff here. This I checked, these are like seven inches, which I think will work, seven and a half inches. But I'm gonna try to make my version of it. We'll see what, how it ends up. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in here so I can weld the nut on and I'm gonna have it set up basically like a vise. In my 20s, I probably would have wasted three more hours and made all my welds look pretty and I wouldn't get beat up, but uh, pretty much going to function the way I want it. I didn't want a lot of time and money in it, so I believe that's going to do what I want it to do. We built this yesterday, uh, springtime when we do our grading of the camp road, we always have to keep care of the birch. We're in an area where there's a lot of birch and they hang over the road. Sometimes I have to cut them in the winter because they actually come down where you can't even pass with the plow. But uh, I got hurt years ago cutting small stuff like this. It's never a big log. It's always something like this when you're trying to cut it on the ground, you hold it with your foot. One kicked up and got me in the knee and it actually made the saw kick back on me. Um, and yes, I do have traps and all that. I don't tend to have them when this stuff, when I'm set up to cut wood, I do wear them. We're going to try to keep this in the truck in the winter too, because I can always move my spinner to the side. It, it comes right off in two seconds. And a lot of times when we're plowing, like two in the morning, you'll go down a road and you'll be bent over to the point where you can't even pass through with the truck. So we're just going to keep this in the back of the truck with a small chainsaw. Um, no, all my plow routes within probably eight miles of my house anyways, as far as the roads go. So we could always go back and grab that or a chainsaw. But we'll see if it works.
Tighten these today. I don't even think you really have to. It does seem to stay. I, I just don't want it to be bouncing around, but that does seem to work pretty good. Normally we go through one day, cut it, get rid of the brush, and then um, the next day we go grab all the wood. So like that just sits in there pretty good without even tightening it. But Like it's gonna work pretty good. It took me, I probably got two hours in the whole thing, so pretty good. There's a little echo I told you the other day and I think another video but we do have some small echoes but this is a type of saw you can keep in your truck in the winter they they that's what they're good for stuff like this I think